Richard Krause. Uh, the book is um, 500 pages, probably at least, 450 yeah. 500 pages, mm -hmm. and there's a lot in it. And so I was frankly a little nervous. I thought, how, how, can, <laughs> how can they adapt this book that, that is so rich and has so much stuff in it into a two-hour movie? Shouldn't this maybe be a miniseries? Tell me a little bit about your thoughts on you know the adaptation, because Miguel tells me you're very close to this material as well. I just love the book, too. But um, I think it works as a movie. Reading the book, you know, it's very cinematic, I found. It feels like, you know, I mean, it's... The humor of the book would work really well on screen, so I think that was the thought behind making it a movie was to capture the humor on screen. And you can't tell the whole story of the book because it's so huge. But I mean, the book exists for that reason, you know. And the book is its own enjoyment, I think. But I think it works as a movie. I think it's worth putting the voice of the book up on a screen. So that was our hope, you know. Right. You know? I I can't remember who it was, but it was somebody like uh, Raymond Chandler or somebody who said that somebody asked him like. You know, don't you hate it when uh, they make movies out of your books and they ruin your books? He goes, the books, and my books aren't ruined. They're up here on the yeah, shelf. It's they're not fine. Like, yeah, it's yeah. not like they're taking all the books <laughs> away from people. I mean, you know, we, yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, one of the one of the uh, the sort of pleasures of this movie, I think, um, it, it, for fans of the book, is that a lot of the dialogue is it seems to me straight out of the book. Yeah, we took as much as we could. Yeah. I, I love the voice in the book and the the humor, you know. So we. Any chance there was to put a line from the book or, you know, whatever we could put in, it, we, we did. And, and it often gets laughs on screen, you know, the, the lines that are verbatim from the book. So that kind of proves, I think, that it works as a movie, just yeah. the book. Yeah. Well, it plays well. And, and often, I mean, dialogue in, in a, a book is a much different thing than dialogue in a film. For sure. Yeah, yeah. So, and, but it, it plays really, really well. Yeah, it's nice when those lines get laughs and when they work, you know, it, it's a good feeling. Tell me about uh, Nick Twist and what it was uh, that that you really responded to about this character. I love the voice of the character, and you know it's nice when you're reading the book because you're reading his journals, so you're really tapping right into his mind, and um, feels almost like you're you're sort of feeling the thought process of the author of C.D. Payne, you know. And when you're reading any book, you're kind of getting a sense of what's going on in the author's head, right, in a very personal way. So. Um, I just connected with that, with the uh, thought process of the character, and, and you know the the humor of the book just really connected with me. I really found it funny, and, and the character I thought was real. You know, it was he wrote it really personally. It felt it felt like he was writing it in his own voice. He wasn't trying to sound like a fourteen-year-old kid. He wasn't putting on any false naivete or anything, or trying to sound less intelligent. He was just writing, and it was personal. And I think that's. When people connect to things, when they when they feel personal. Well, it's, it's such an interesting thing, I think, because when you're 16 and 17 years old, which are the essentially the ages of the characters in the book, yeah, or in, in, in the film, um, everything takes on a really heightened importance. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's a very Good passionate point. time in you're people's right. lives. Everything feels desperate, and um, <laughs> you're right. Yeah, well, and, and, and when you love, like you know, when you love something, you really love it. So you yeah. know. When uh, you're playing, you, you, you need to playing. Hang on so the, the Godard movies that you t that you know she's got pictures of Jean-Paul Belmondo on her walls, and, and you love the, the Sinatra albums. Yeah, yeah it, it it really struck me that you know it might seem anachronistic to have you know movies from the '60s in the the bedroom, you know, posters from the '60s in the, the bedroom of this young girl, or to have you listen to Sinatra, but somehow. Uh, in the movie, you get the idea that they found them, and that they're both such passionate people that they, there was something they responded to, and that they just and they felt like it elevated them out of the world they're stuck in, right? Where, yeah. Yeah, I think that's what it is, and I think that's why they gravitate towards each other, because they feel like they're, you know, a glimpse at a better world yeah. <laughs> outside of this world that they're stuck in. Yeah. Richard Krause.